platforms. I want to start off by just offering um, not only my myself but our, our programs sympathy and condolences to the Jim Galuski to his family. Um, just a tremendous mountaineer served served our football program for five decades, and uh, so just want want his family to know that we're thinking about them. Um, this is this is week six of of operating. Uh, remotely operating our entire organization and program remotely. I'm proud of how our staff and, and our players have handled everything. Um, you know, the, these are these are tough times, and it's uh, it's tough. So much of what our players do is is dictated by structure, and um, we try to do the best we can uh, given the circumstances. That's kind of been our motto: do the best you can with what you have available, and that's that's what we're trying to strive to do. It's uh, our focus throughout this, and this I think is the third time we've met like this and has been and, and really hadn't changed. Our focus has been on players' health and wellness, um, creating and maintaining a routine and schedule that's built around um, their rest, their academics, their nutrition, meetings, and then workouts and football skill work that we can't mandate or monitor. Um, and then the last thing is just accountability. It's trying to continue to build um, a culture of accountability. Uh, academics are a priority right now. We're in the last week of classes. Uh, we have finals next week. Um, Brittany O'Dell and her staff have, have, have really done a great job throughout. We've maintained having uh, tutoring sessions. The academic advisors have been in daily contact with our players. Uh, and, and like I said, I can't praise her and her staff enough. Uh, big weekend for several of our former uh, Mountaineers uh, with the NFL draft and neat experience, uh, kind of uh, seeing that done virtually. I'm sure many of you uh, witnessed. Um, I want to congratulate uh, the guys that were chosen um, and then sign free agent deals. Start with Kenny Robinson. I hadn't really talked about him. Um, maintained contact with him throughout and uh, happy for him. I thought he did a, a really good job. Um, with the article he wrote on the Players' Tribune, uh, took ownership, and um, I'm happy he gets a second chance. I think people deserve second chances. Um, he paid his price, went to the XFL, and now he's got an opportunity to pursue his dreams, and, and we support him in that. Um, extremely happy for Colton McKivitz and his family. I thought that was him going. I think it's a great place to go. I think it, uh, what they do offensively really matches his skill set, and he uh, – he did a tremendous job for us, and I think he'll have a long, long NFL career. Um, and then the guys that, that signed free agent contracts, uh, Keith Washington, Akeem Bailey, Josh Norwood, and George Campbell, um, those guys are all deserving. They played really well during their senior years, made huge contributions here. Um, and I think, I hope, and I'm hopeful, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't know, I don't make those decisions, but I'm hopeful uh, several other other of our guys get that opportunity to really showcase their skills at the next level. Um, really enjoyed over the last few weeks, um, several of you all have done stories and um, with social media recognition, I know our own people have done a, have done a great job. And I thought our own people in house uh, did a tremendous job with our, with our virtual spring game. But many of you have written stories and, that, and I've really enjoyed watching and learning kind of about the tradition of our program. Um, I've known the dates and I've known the wins, but I didn't really know the stories behind them. So I've enjoyed that and got a ton of positive feedback uh, on social media and, and email and other things about how our fan base has really enjoyed that as well. It's, uh, you know, I, I appreciate our players, our former players, uh, the guys that created that tradition. They've been really giving up their time. Uh, have you seen uh, several of our NFL players, our former NFL players have joined um, the position groups on Zoom. Uh, they had a huge alumni Zoom meeting. Um, I, I think Pat McAfee talked about that. Um, I kind of welcomed them and, and, and had a couple comments. And I got out of the way and, and got off because I thought that was kind of their sacred time. And from what I understand, that lasted an hour and a half, two hours. And, and they really had a good time with that. So I appreciate those guys really paying it forward. Um, recruiting continues to be going well. Uh, right now, our coaches, our on-field staff is doing – well, we're, we're virtually recruiting. You've seen the graphics go out. What we're trying to do is um, during this virtual spring recruiting, you know, spring evaluation usually goes April 15th to May. 
Uh, we're trying to cover our areas, obviously, via phone and doing some virtual tours and those things during this time. Um, I know several of you have, have, just like I have over the last 24 hours, have seen the, the working committee release some of the NIL uh, discussion points. I've seen those too. Um, this is something that we've been preparing for within our program um, pr probably for over the last six months. And we've got a really good plan, uh, an educational plan of how we're going to deal with it, deal, deal with it within our program. We've got a partnership that we're going to announce here in the, in, in the next week or so that we're excited about. And so when we do that, um, obviously you'll, you all be the first ones to know. And then uh, finishing up, I, I, I remain hopeful and cautious optimistic about playing football this fall we've had meetings with uh with the big 12 conference and so again i think hopefully and cautiously optimistic so with that i will i will open it up to questions greg yep you already know go ahead greg <laughs> so neil you, your last statement was sort of part of my question in terms of what are you guys being told about if you're going to play at normal time this fall and even if and when practices and workouts can start this summer. Yeah, so I think what, we're, what we've are we done as a league, and, and I really think we've done a nice job led by Commissioner Bowlesby and our athletic directors in the Big 12 Conference, is, is taking kind of a wait-and-see approach and not getting too far out in the future. Because I, I think everybody that's going through this is, is kind of dealing with it. And I think where we're making mistakes is, is making declarations for really far down the road, so we haven't done that. Everything that we've done in our league right now is, is focused on that May 31st. Um, and I think Shane, who leads the Football Oversight Committee, um, they've been commissioned with figuring out a, a return to play, what that looks like, and I think they're working on that. Um, and so right now what we're doing is, again, we're, we're hopeful, cautiously optimistic um, about playing the season on time, uh, and I'm sure it won't be a normal fall. What, what we thought about – or when we think about a normal uh, fall football Saturday, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure we're going to have that. But I am cautiously optimistic and hopeful that we are going to play. Um, and again, I think our league has done a nice job as far as um, as not being reactive to everything that's going on. And and uh, Commissioner Bowlesby's done a good job leading us. All right, your next question here from John. Go ahead, John. I got a couple here. One off topic. I'm curious if you've been watching Last Dance on ESPN. Are you a? Were you grew up? A, did you grow up a Jordan fan? And then uh, the second thing: uh, some of the injured guys you've had, like Taj, and some of the. How have they been progressing? How have you been able to keep track of them because they're not around to do uh, rehab and so forth? Yeah, so I've definitely uh, probably like the rest of uh, anybody that's interested in sports. We've had two major events that we've watched. We've watched uh, uh, the NFL draft and then. Uh, the last dance. And I think that's encouraging to whenever we do return to sports on TV, I think they're going to get record numbers. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been fun to watch the last dance just because is Jordan's heyday. And I was a Jordan fan and I, and I still, I'm appreciative of anybody that is elite. And, and I think people forget how, how much of a competitor he was and how elite he was. Um, so I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed it for a couple of reasons. I've enjoyed the, because there's something on TV, first of all, but I've enjoyed it because it's giving you some backstories. Uh, it's giving you some real look at how Phil managed those personalities, uh, from as a coach. I, I appreciate that. And that's been kind of a learning tool. Um, it's also been a nice flashback for me because that 96, 97, 98, Jordan's second run were really my sophomore, junior, senior year in high school. And I can remember Jordan hitting the shot to beat the Jazz. Um, and I'll never forget, we were um, – and sometimes my memory works like this. You know, a lot of people remember, like, my mom can tell you exactly where she was when Kennedy got uh, shot, and most people can remember 9-11. I can remember 9-11, that deal, but I can remember important sports deals too. Like, um, but I can remember I was standing at the equipment door in Commonwealth Stadium at Kentucky – following my senior in high school, preparing to play in the Kentucky-Tennessee all-star football game uh, this, in the summer of, of 98 and watching through the equipment um, the equipment window when Jordan hit that shot. And so it's been a nice little flashback to kind of those years for me and just going through that and, and 
reminiscing a little bit. The second second question, John, that you had, uh, and I'm glad you didn't ask me about records because I'm not in that deal. I, I missed that age bracket, John. So I'm glad you're not asking about records on social media. Um, but uh, Taj and VD are both uh, recovering from lower leg injuries. Uh, Van Darius has has done tremendous in his rehab, um, and Taj has done well uh, as well. But but Van Darius is ahead uh, is much ahead of schedule right now. And Vince Blankenship and his group, they're able to do uh, virtual rehab and some other things that really have continued that progress. And then we've got some shoulder guys that had surgery um, that they're recovering and they're on pace. They're all doing well and, and they've progressed into normal type of work uh, workouts now. All right, your next question here is from Kevin Kender. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, Coach, there's been a lot of discussion about – you know, what you have to do to get ready to play. And it seems to me it's split into two things. Number one is conditioning, getting everybody back together. But then number two, actual football practice. If you had to cut that down on the second part, would you be willing to go back and, you know, if it meant getting in a whole season saying, okay, we're only going to really have a week or two on the field, or is there a minimum amount of actual football you need to practice to get back in that shape? Yeah, so I think – and this is where the oversight committee, which Shane leads, um, and they're dealing with a multitude of, of people on this. And one of them is, is, a, is a group that's, that's all health, medical, and wellness related. And, you know, I, I think we'll see, um, I think everybody's trending toward this six week return to play now. Um, and that gives you some time for your strength conditioning. And then you kind of gradually incline into football work. And so that's uh, – I'm fine with that model. I'm kind of in the, in the deal is – I think that six week is, a, is really – I think it's fair. Um, and I, and I want to say this, too. I think that most things that are being done during this time have been really equitable across Power 5 football, which is important. Um, and I think the return to play model will be equitable. Um, and, and I'm like most coaches. I just want to know what it is so we can start the planning process of what that looks like. Your next question from Derek Red. Go ahead, Derek. Hey, Neil. Um, you were talking about being six weeks in. How far out do you guys plan when you kind of go through this kind of the, the altered version of your, you know, spring season, off season? And how often do you go to revisit that plan the longer you, you guys are in this kind of revised scenario? Derek, you asking about in a regular situation or like this, this situation? <laughs> this situation so here's how we attack this we basically um initially when it first came down we we took it on a week by week uh when it became evident um and the conference came out with the may 31st then we planned through may 31st and then as it's gone on we have gone on and stretched our calendar through the the end of june so that's what we're working off right now it's through the end of June. So what we've done is we've staged just like, um, even though we can't track the workouts, Mike Joseph and his staff is able to, to give these workouts. So the workouts that he's, um, that he's handing out or, you know, I think it's via an app or something, whatever he's doing, is those workouts build up into a, a potential return, you know, in July sometime and then leading into a season starting on time. And so, because that's the direction we're under right now, so we're planning for that. And we're doing the same thing from a football standpoint. We're planning on, all right, when we get back in, you know, working off a of mid-July or a July um, return, we're working off what's that look like? What are, we, what are our expectations for our players as far as schematics, fundamentals, all that kind of thing? We're just kind of building into it. Um, but that's kind of how we're operating. We've got plan we, – we are planned out uh, through – through the end of June right now, if we need to adjust, we will. Um, I think one thing that the, the happy medium in this whole deal is, is like my antenna is up for the mental health and wellness, well-being of our players. Like that is, um, and just because like there's, like we are spread across, everybody's situations are different. Um, a lot of our guys are riding emotional roller coasters. Um, and, you know, you just think about it, 
you know, you're, you're out on your own. Now you're back in your parents' home and it's been a couple of years or um, just different things that your family may be going through, people out of work, um, different things like that. So our guys are dealing with so much. So what I try to do is really stay in tune. And if I feel, and this is the same way with staff, if I feel frustration levels or I feel people are, are getting um, into, a, into a negative place, then we cut back a lot, you know. Um, and that's kind of, I think, I think you got to kind of get a, get a temperature for almost each day how it's going or how each week how it's going um, and then be able to adjust your plan. We're actually going to take a question here from, uh, from Bob Herzl. Um, assuming you can start on time or almost on time and get in a full preseason and full season, how will you define a successful second season? Certainly you won't be judging it on the uh, win-loss record alone, correct? I thought Herzl was getting ready to come on this Zoom. I was going to be really, really – I was really going to be uh, uh, surprised, first of all, and then second of all, then I was going to talk about how everybody's just gotten these technological advances down pat. So I was, I was sitting there trying to thank Grant if he was going to be on Zoom or if this was a telephone question. So re, re ask that thing. Again. All right. Assuming you start on time or almost on time and get in a full preseason and a full season, how will you define a successful second season? It certainly won't be judged on win and loss record alone, correct? Well, what we've talked about is improvement. We're looking for improvement. So, um, we're looking for improvement across the board, offense, defense, special teams. We feel like if we make the uh, the improvements that we've really been stressing since January, then it'll show up in that win-loss uh, deal. Um, but, you know, as far as expectations and all that kind of stuff, we're just waiting through it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, um, I'm, I'm focused on we need to win. We need to win remote, remote – uh, the running the operating the program remotely. If we can win during this time, what and what does that look like? I think it's everybody staying healthy. I think it's everybody staying safe. I think it's growing our relationships. I think it's doing well academically. I think it's making sure that we continue uh, on the from a nutrition standpoint, maintaining uh, our, the, our body weights when we left. I think it's being in uh, some type of shape for when we return. We don't have to go backwards. We can just we can hit the when it hit the ground running wherever we get back. So we're focused on winning this time right now. And then when we get actually get back into the football aspect, we'll start, we'll start worrying about that then. All right. Um, go ahead, Jared. Yeah, coach. Uh, now that you've been doing this remote work for a couple of weeks, um, what do you think works well? What do you think still needs work? And when everything returns to normal, do you see anything kind of sticking around? Yeah, I think this, uh, you know, working working remotely. I mean, there's some positives to it. You get um, everybody involved, getting more family time, which I think is important. You know, a lot of this time I wouldn't get back. I've had more time with my with my wife, and my kids, and than I maybe ever have, and I've enjoyed that. And I think there's been some 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 great benefits for me personally. I think that uh, understanding how to stay connected, even though you're apart. Um, I've said it, I think a couple of different times is there's some things that I've learned during this process both in recruiting and then operating with our players and our staff that we'll, we'll take this with us when we get back, whatever our new normal is. Um, and some of these Zoom meetings are good, multiple FaceTime calls, things like that. Um, I think this one thing that really sticks out um, as, I, as I bounce around and go to our position meeting and then, and then spend some quality time with our quarterbacks is this, from a, from a coach standpoint, has made us better teachers. Um, and it's, and it's allowed us to really kind of inspect what we expect it, and be better at that. You know, how do we quiz? How do we, how do we make sure that these guys are getting the, uh, the material we're trying to teach? So I do think that as, as coaches, we've improved as teachers and we'll continue to grow by doing this uh, virtual learning. All right, your next question from John. Go ahead, John. Curious, Coach, to get your thoughts on the name, image, and likeness and how that could maybe impact recruiting. For instance, you say School X could say, listen, you know, you could come to our school, we can guarantee you so many endorsements or whatnot. Does that impact just maybe a small number of prospects? Have you talked about that with some coaches? What's some of your thoughts on that? 
So, John, honestly, uh, still learning. Um, I felt like the you, you kind of feel momentum growing, and you and I could feel the momentum growing, and just conversations with with uh, with Shane and and just people in the profession. So you could feel the momentum growing. So what we did is we tried to get in front of that, and uh, we've partnered with a with an individual that we'll we'll announce here here pretty pretty soon and. It's about education and kind of educating our players how to take advantage of that, uh, how to create a brand, what's a brand look like, those type of things. So that's that's something that we we got ahead of and we feel really good about our plan about doing that. Um, but as far as how to take advantage of recruiting and all that stuff, I don't really know. I, I'm not as educated as, as I need to be right now. Um, kind of waiting. I was waiting for these re recommendations to come down. Uh, and I think it's important to know these recommendations they haven't passed yet. Um, but gonna I read through them last night, um, read through them again this morning, uh, and we'll continue to do that. I do think there's some there's some potential benefits here in West Virginia just because we don't have any professional sport competition and we're the only power five team. So I do think there's some things that we can we can we can use. Um, I do think there's some things that are marketable, uh, that our players are marketable. Um, our brand is strong. I did notice that that the branding of your school is gonna be not allowed in that, which I do understand. I don't think it's going to be a windfall for everybody on our roster or everybody on the basketball team. I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, but I, I'm in, I'm, I'm just kind of learning as we go on it. All right. Your next question from uh, Mike Kazaza. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Uh, John stole my thunder a little bit here, but I'll, I'll kind of keep on it. If that's all right. Um, when you're exploring these things and you're kind of coming up with a plan, there are so many perceived negatives about this and how it may be corrupting and bad influences and all that. Are there any like shadows out there that kind of have you spooked as a, as somebody who's in charge of whatever may or may not happen here? Yeah, I think it's, yeah. Um, Cause you don't know what the parameters are. And then when you get the parameters, how do you monitor that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like who's, who's in charge of monitor? Is that going to be part of the head coach responsibility? Because how am I going to monitor if they have an agent? You know, there's a, there's a bunch of different um, – there's a lot more – I have a lot more questions on it than answers. Um, I understand why, why, we went down, why we went down this path. I do get it. Um, again, I think it can be beneficial in to, to some extent. I just don't know how you manage it. And, again, I'm just not educated enough on it. Um, we will, you know, we will, and we'll figure it out. But right now I'm just not probably educated enough on it to know how it's going to be regulated, how it's going to be monitored, all those types of things. Go ahead, Greg Hunter. Neil, in terms of the virtual recruiting, as you said, you've been into that a couple of weeks now, sort of, you know, doing the evaluation work. So your thoughts on how that's gone generally, and then also, I mean, those of us that report on it, you're still getting commitments. Did you still think, did you expect that that would continue during this phase? Or are there things that, that have surprised you as you move through this? Um, you know, the virtual recruiting, we had a plan once this kind of all went down the middle of March. And our plan was to continue on with the people that have been on our campus multiple times and guys that were – that were close to making decisions to can continue to move down that path with them. Um, and I think our staff's done a nice job with that. We've maintained really good relationships. And then the, the second thought was, okay, how do we take our program to those student athletes and their families that were planning on coming during, during the spring and early part of the summer to see us. And so what we've done is we've done virtual tours. We've done uh, kind of infomercial type, um, videos on who we are. We try to take each of our important aspects of our program to the, the student athlete and their families, whether it's nutrition, strength conditioning, academics, um, facilities, all those type of things we've tried to take to them. And then we've continued to, to build those relationships in the, in the hope is when it, the dead period's over that we can get those individuals on campus. Really the only thing that's been surprising um, it reaffirmed, this is reaffirmed that peer pressure is real in recruiting. You see this. I think people make decisions based on um, kind of momentum of social media. Uh, that reaffirmed that. I kind of felt like that all along, but it reaffirmed that. Um, 
the second thing, the only real surprise of this is some of these kids that are making decisions without ever stepping foot on campus. And, and I've said this publicly, I said a couple of them when I have one offs with each of you is it, it'll be interesting to me when signing date rolls around, how many of these commitments uh, of guys that are committing that haven't been on that campus, how many of those stick? I think most of the commitments, if you look, you always read about not decommits and all that kind of stuff, but there's the high, the high, a uh, high, high percentage of guys that commit, those things stick. And, and they stick because most people make educated decisions. They've been on campus multiple times and know what they're, and all that kind of stuff. It'll be interesting to me is how many of these commitments that that will stick that haven't been on campus and haven't been around the coaches, haven't been around the, the team. Um, that'll be interesting to me um, when all this is said and done. All right, go ahead, Jerry. Uh, good morning, Coach. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. I was just wondering, I know you can't mandate or monitor your guys while they're working out at home. What kind of creative things have you seen them doing uh, to try to get themselves ready for the season? I know of one offensive lineman at another school built a uh, punching bag in his backyard. Uh, what, what kind of things are guys doing at home on their own? Yeah, you're seeing all kinds of creativity. Um, we were, uh, you know, we were, I was having some fun on social media watching those guys. And then the NCAA passed this rule where you can't like or comment. I don't know how the hell they're going to monitor that, but they, they made this rule early, uh, over the weekend where uh, you can't like or comment. So I, I've, I've been seeing some stuff, but I, I can't, I can't have fun with it anymore. So, but uh, you know, we've seen, it, it, it's been fun, man. It's uh you see people that have uh, converted their garages. You see uh, uh, one of our guys took uh, some two by fours and, and, and made a weight bench. Uh, I've enjoyed some of our uh, the public service announcements some of our players have made. Um, you're seeing uh, some of our players fill up uh, book bags and different things to use as weight. Um, it's been, uh, you know, it's 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 been fun to watch, and not not only on our team but across, you know, sports in general. You're seeing all kinds of unique ways to train. Go ahead and take these last two questions here. First one from uh, Mike Kazaza. Neil, have you paid any attention to the the state's plan for reopening the state and trying to figure out timetables that may affect you and your program or even just the fall sports of the university at large? Yeah, I've been following. I've tried to keep up as, as much as I can is, uh, as far as with the news. I think probably just like a lot of you all, I've, I've, I've tried to keep up but not uh, – not be obsessive about it because I think you can get in a bad place. If you're doing too much. I'll tell you what I've done is I try to watch, try to watch uh, Fox, CNN, and then the local. And I figured somewhere, somewhere there's a medium. If I can take all three of them in and kind of filter them all down, there's somewhere a medium in that. And then uh, I've been keeping up with, uh, with the governor's uh, daily updates. I've been keeping up with what Clay has had to say. So, um, and then trying to trying to get that information. So yeah, I think we got to be in tune with it. You know the 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 things that are important to oh well, it's all important. I don't I don't mean that, but the thing that I've kind of watched is you know when do gyms open up? You know I think that's something that um, is important for our players. Um, that's a key component. And when does that open up? Do our, are our numbers still declining? Um, because I think as the numbers continue to climb, then we have a better opportunity to gather. So I don't have all the answers for it. And I'd be lying to you if I told you I understand it. I, what I'm doing is is I'm staying at home and, and doing what I'm supposed to do. All right, last question from John, and we'll kick it to uh, Coach Montoro. Go ahead, John. Just curious, um, I remember back in February during signing day, you talked about hanging on to a scholarship or two to use to evaluate your guys during the spring to figure out what you needed. Of course, you didn't have spring practice, so you weren't able to do that. Does that change how you use those? How, what's your thoughts on how you're going to, to use those remaining scholarships? We've got two, possibly three, but we got at least two. Um, I think the the spots where we have needs, and, and I've said this before. I think offensive line, um, like the like the maybe potentially add an interior defensive lineman, and then 
we need maybe another, we're thin in the secondary. And, and so those are the, the three areas that, that if we can find the right fit that we'd like to add to our roster whenever we do return. Okay, thanks coach very much for your time and thanks to all the media for being on the call today.